We're in Luke chapter 8. And Jesus has just told the parable of the sower went out to sow his seed. And we talked about being good soil, rocky soil, all those different things that trip us up. And he tells us this new parable about what we're going to read now. And what's funny, it's kind of like, they, they, it's like he doesn't change the subject. He just tells, he's continuing to make his point. It's a very interesting point to make after sower went on to sow some seed. So here, let's read it. Verse, chapter 8, verse 16 through 21. No one, after lighting a lamp, covers it with a container or puts it under a bed. But he puts it on a lampstand so that those who come in may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be evident, nor anything secret that will not be known, not be, come, hmm, be known and come to light. So take care how you listen, for whoever has, to him more shall be given. And whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has, shall be taken away from him. Now his mother and his brother came to him, and they were unable to get to him because of the crowd. And it was reported to him, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wishing to see you. But he answered and said to them, continuing to make his point, by the way, my mother and my brother are these who hear the word of God and do it. So in the first service, I didn't get to this point where the continuation of the sower went out to sow some seed is there's good soil. There's a whole bunch of soils, but there's only one good soil. And you want to make sure you're the good soil. And how do you know? I told you last week. This week, he's going to tell you, continue the subject with, no one puts a light under a basket. They put it on a hill. And no one really plants seed on soil that's not good soil because you get nothing back from it. You, you, it, it, it is wasted seed. And so no one, after lighting a lamp, covers it with a container and puts it under a bushel. And so the question is, no one lights a lamp and then doesn't use it right. Has your lamp been lit? Is the question. Are you lit? (laughs) No, Pastor Steve. It was a trap. You didn't, you, no hands. I was waiting for hands. Anyway. Is your light lit? Is your lamp a light? Are you shining brightly or are you hidden? No one after lighting a lamp. Have you lit your lamp? Has your lamp been lit? Are you a light to the world? Now, when I was young, I don't remember who it was told this story about the sun and the moon. And they were talking about a full on a full moon night, how you can see so many things. It's hard to sleep because there's so much light. It's, uh, there's so much, everything's, you know, shown and lit up. The animals run through your yard, you see them. But on a, on a no moon night, I mean, it's like, reaching out, trying to see where you're going. A light, a light really helps. And he was talking about the full moon, and, and he made this point. He said the full moon has no light of its own. Wow. You can, men, we know that because men landed on it, and they didn't burn up. It has no light of its own. And it doesn't even, it, it's not even warm, but it reflects light onto the earth. When the earth, the dark side of the earth gets light when the moon reflects it to it. And even in the night, you see very clearly sometimes when it's really a bright moon and it's close to the earth. And I was thinking about that. The earth, the moon has no light of its own. Well, I have no light of my own. And I kind of want to be a full moon to my world. I want to reflect light the way a full moon does. And I want to let reflect light into the darkness. I want to be the light of Jesus Christ reflecting off of me into the darkness. But the question still remains, are you, are you lit up? Are you, is, is your light lit? Are you a light to the world? Or maybe you put it under a bed or cover it over with a container. You hide your light. Do you hide your light? Have you hid it? Have you been embarrassed by it? Are you afraid to be known for being a Christian? Are you afraid to be known that Jesus shines his light in you? And that's what he's saying. No one does that who is smart. No one does that that who understands. So we have to decide, are we a light or aren't we a light? And do we hide our light or do we project our light? I was driving recently and I, you know, made some mistakes and other people made mistakes. And I was, I, 
behaved wrongly in about three or four different situations. And each time I thought, oh no, I got all these bumper stickers. You know, I got all these, these Father's House signings on my, they're behind me now and they know I'm Father's House. Yeah. Oh, no. oh no. Well, I got out of my truck and I looked and I, since I got that new truck, I've never put them on. Oh, yes! <laughs> I got away with it. Right? Well, here's what he says next. Nothing is hidden. Every secret will be known. And I mean, this is, this is stuff that doesn't really play well with me. I want, it, I want to keep it a secret. But that I was driving poorly or that I was mad at people just simply for driving. And, you know, what he says is it will become evident. Nothing secret that will not be known and come to the light. And what light does, it exposes. Is your light lit? Are you exposing to the world the greatness of Jesus Christ, the joy of Jesus Christ? I think sometimes the message of Christianity is pretty dark and gloomy. But are you exposing the love of God? Are you exposing the grace of God in you, the, the pay the price for you kind of wonder of Christianity, the I, he lives in me, is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me? Is that what you're reflecting to the world because nothing's going to be hidden if we are it's going to be revealed if we do not walk with jesus christ and show the world jesus christ but we continue to say well i believe someone says you know who's living in sin um blatantly posting it on facebook i put it out to him and said, well i believe well there's not how is how how do you, how is it evident that you believe nothing's going to be hidden Whatever you reflect to the world is what you believe, not what you say you believe. And if that's what you put on Facebook as you not believing, then you, it, it's going to be exposed. Now, I don't get to judge who goes or who's successful, who gets to go to heaven or not, but I would not want to be someone who relies on the words I believe instead of my light shines and I'm not hidden, I'm exposed. One of the things about the Father's House leadership is that we believe that every leader should be exposed. You should scrutinize your leadership. You should scrutinize the people around you who walk with you. You should, and if you don't know what that means, you should check them out. You should look at them. I invite you to look into my life and see if, if there's anything wrong, if I'm doing anything wrong. Now, in Oroville alone, there's plenty of people that say I'm doing things wrong. But just I say to them when I meet them, I just say, well, just show me. Show me where I'm wrong. Show me where you know you have, you didn't just hear it at the bar. You, you know, I, I'm doing something wrong. You didn't hear it at the gas station. You know, I'm doing, just show me, show me what I'm doing. Remember I was filming a, a I was filming for a news crew about an event that was guy and this guy was really mad at me and he comes over, you know, confess it or solo confess. And I said, well, here's a news camera. Tell him what you know. You want to hear what, how bad I am and what I do wrong. And it's like scrutinize, look into, find out. And make sure you know who you're listening to. Here's what he says. I, I kind of jumped the gun because I s s talked about it before. Um, he says in verse 18, so take care how you listen. What that really means is take care how, what goes into your ears. Take care how you listen for whoever, whoever has. To him more shall be given. Take care. Be careful how you listen. It also means take care who you listen to, what you listen to, what goes in. Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. And so we just scrutinize our leaders and say, you must have good fruit for me to listen to you. And here at the Father's House with our leadership, I promise you, every person that stands up here and leads worship, every person that preaches the gospel to you from this stadium, from this stage, have been scrutinized. Perfectly, no, but they've been scrutinized. They've been looked at. They've been challenged to be the light of the world before they open their mouth, to shine Jesus into the world. And that's how they get the microphone. And because they decide to be careful about what they listen to. They listen to what's right, they, they, they consume it, and then that's what they shine back. They reflect what Jesus is doing. They don't make it up on their own. We don't just make it up to fit what we want it to look like. Well, like we're saying this, so we're going to make sure it says this. No, it says this, so we're going to make sure we're saying this. And that's what the, you can count on the leadership of the Father's house. You can scrutinize my life and look into it, and you can ask around, and of course you'll meet those people, but you'll also meet people who have actually done the looking, and they'll, they'll say what they'll say about me. But you have to decide. 
Because I'm up here telling you what will and won't get you to heaven. I'm telling you what Jesus is saying. And you want to make sure you're careful about what you listen to. Amen? Amen. Now, he who has, more will be given. And he who has not, even what he thinks he has, will be taken away. This is really crazy. This is, this is like, he who has, more shall be given. And what is it that you're supposed to have in this? Sower went out to sow seeds. You're supposed to be good soil, producing what? Good fruit. With this one here, you're supposed to be a light on a hill shining to a world, not embarrassed that you belong to him. Not embarrassed to tell them that this is the way. I was watching a cop show the other day. In the opening scene, a native, a native priest, uh, you know, indigenous personnel, a First Nation, wherever you're from, however you call people who lived there for many centuries, um, was praying over the land. And he was praying to the land. He was praying to nature, asking nature for favor. Well, that was, went on for minutes, and then the next, very next scene was a lady in a morgue, a doctor in a morgue, praying a Buddhist prayer to the dead. And, and a few minutes later, they mentioned Christianity, but they mention it as a negative effect. And I'm like, they are just proud of praying to creation. They're proud, and they're shining the light of what they believe about the Buddhist prayer for the dead, but they're also ashamed of and and don't want to offend anybody by using the name of Jesus as though it would be offense. And it's really clear that we, the church, in America, there's 110 pe million people who claim to believe in Jesus and not something else. And if 110 million adults proclaim Jesus or uh, say they believe in Jesus, you know that's more than half the voting age adults in America. It's crazy. If that many people believe in Jesus Christ, why would we be ashamed to say his prayer? Even if you believe it's okay to say the other two prayers, but why would you be a prayer to him or even his name? The Christian believing priest was the negative one. He was the one to not look at. So we must not now for some time have been very good at shining our light. We must not have been very careful about what we listen to and who we listen to. We have not been very careful on how we live. We have no embarrassment at proclaiming our shame. But if we are more careful and we care about who we listen to and we just don't let anybody lay hands on us and we just don't let anybody speak into our life, we make sure that they hear the truth. They hear the word. They read the words of Jesus. What he says here is, who is my mother and my father? Who is my mother and my brothers? I'm sorry. They are these who hear the word of God and do it. And what that is, and I'm going to tell you this is absolutely true, the word of God that Jesus is talking about is him, right. his word. He's the rider on the white horse called the word of God. He's the one John the Apostle is talking about when he says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and goes on to, and we have beheld his glory and he goes on to talk about it. Then he says, and that word became flesh and dwelt among us. And Jesus is saying, he who hears my words and does it. He said it many other ways. He said, anyone who would come after me must deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. And anyone who would follow me, you'll know their disciple because my disciple because their love for one another. And he said, if you love me, you'll obey me. And he said, you are my disciple if you do what I tell you to do. It's all big, a big, beautiful light shining on the world that my intention is to do exactly what he says and my intention is to get the word right. And I can't tell you how many times in my life I've heard sermons about a verse from sources all over the world and I just knew this is just not what he's talking about. And I've asked the Holy Spirit, and clearly, it's so clear that in the context of just reading it, you realize His Word has so much truth in it, and it doesn't contradict itself. In Jesus' plan for Christian living, it is so straight, it is so narrow, it is so beautiful. And if you and I would simply reflect the, the beauty of it, the love of God that He would pay your debt, He doesn't just come and let you out of jail, He just doesn't let you get away with it. No, somebody must pay, and he pays. Somebody must suffer, and he suffers. Somebody must die, and he dies. 
What do we do if we continue to live in sin after receiving the, the word of grace? What, do we nail him again to the cross? Try to get him to pay a second time? Paul was incredulous by that. John the Apostle said, you're a liar and the truth isn't in you if you do that. It's, it's hateful. And so once you receive the word of truth to live in sexual immorality outside of marriage, to be addicted and, and steal and lie and cheat, well, every single negative list I know of in the Bible includes lying, and we live in a world full of lies. You have no idea what the truth is anymore. You can't even watch the news anymore. You, you have no idea if there was even truth spoken once on either side of the aisle. You don't know what's the truth, except I know the truth because he said, I am the truth and I have lived his words now for 46 years and I have found that he is the truth. And I, I, I'm convinced. I fell in love and I'm convinced. I don't need any more convincing, but my job being called by God is to tell you the truth in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I am very edgy about anything I would say that would be wrong. And I, and I seek the Lord about what his word means before I get up and talk to you about it. Now, in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2, I want to read this to you. My, now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, oh, by this gospel you are saved if you firmly hold to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. What's the saddest thing I know of is a church this size or any size, churches all over America that someone sits in all their life and then goes to hell because they're believing what the gospel others preached. And what Paul's talking about is as soon as he left Corinth, with, after having led them all to the Lord and baptized them, these other guys came in claiming to be apostles, and they were maybe better looking, I don't know. It, the second letter of the Corinthians, Paul said, they may be great, but they're definitely not smarter. They definitely don't know the word the way I do. And he proclaimed, I, he said that in chapter 11, they don't know what I know. And if you believe the gospel I preach to you, you're being saved. But if you believe any other gospel, you believe in vain. You will not be saved. Another place he said, God will not be mocked. You'll not proclaim Jesus and not shine his light. You'll not proclaim Jesus and, and, believe, and not believe his names and be saved. His names, his words and be saved. So he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Jesus cried it out during the parable of the sower. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Do you hear? Is your light lit? Light lit. Is your lamp on a stand? Are you hearing what Jesus is saying? Or are you letting the world system, which is created by the devil and ruled by the devil, teach you? Now, they're not here to wipe out the church. They're here to infiltrate the church and change the message from the truth to the lies. And he's saying... No one lights a lamp and hides it. They put it on a stand so that others, when, the, when I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to me. And I'm telling you, that's what he does. He draws people to him, but he can't, he doesn't do it. He, I, I imagine he can do whatever he wants, but he doesn't do it if we hide the truth. And I think it's really sometimes hard to preach the truth because people don't like it. And if they don't like the truth you preach, then they don't like you. And nobody wants to not be liked. So you want to preach the truth and you want to be kind of leery of it because you don't want to get it wrong. And so you seek the Lord and you let the Holy Spirit speak in you. And he says, whoever has more, whoever has more will be given. And, and so what the world offers you and even preachers offer you is wealth comfort, um, fame, fun, all these things, there's a whole list. And that becomes the message of Christianity. If you follow Jesus and you do right, you'll have money, you'll have fame, you'll have fun, you'll have comfort. And that just couldn't be further from the truth. That's the snake slithering down the tree, talking to Eve, saying, did he really promise you this? I think he really wants you to have fun, money, comfort, fame. 
you know, and it goes on and on. But what he's really offering and what the litmus test is for whether you have ears to hear and whether your light is lit and we should put it on a hill because there's a lot of lights people think they have that should never be put on a hill. We don't want people. Yeah, keep that one under the table, baby. But the light that we want to put on the hill, the light that we want to proclaim to the lost, the, the, the message we want you to have ears to hear is one of love and grace and power and presence. One that receives Jesus in this way, that walks in this way, with a confidence of their dependence on God, knowing that when they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, they fear no evil, not because that evil can't touch them, but what David says in that psalm, he says, for thou art with me in the valley of the shadow of death. That's why I don't have to fear. I am in the valley of the shadow of death. I do live in a world of dirt and filth and sin and darkness and ugliness, but I fear none of that because you're with me. You live in me. Jesus promised you'd be with me even to the end of the age. I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. I am with you even to the end of the age. I am with you. You can safely shine my light, and I don't promise that you won't walk through valleys. I promise I'll be with you, and I will go with you, and I will see you through. And it says that the money, the fame, the fun, and the comfort, they're going to be taken away anyway. You're going to lose them anyway. And what I know about the not going to heaven is there is no comfort, no money, no fame, and no fun. And what I know about heaven is that it's full of love and grace and power and presence. And joy unspeakable, full of glory, and peace that passes understanding. Peace that cannot be understood. Glory that the mind cannot even conceive of. We cannot even imagine the glory of God if we are invited in as good and faithful servants to his glory, to the rest he prepared for us. And so, why put our, ha why put our light up? Why worry about having our light lit? Our lamp lit loud and clear, bright and shiny. Why? Because we're not shining us, we're shining him. And no one meets Jesus and doesn't like him. They meet me and don't like him, and that's a shame. So let's make sure I'm not a lamp on a hill. Let's make sure he's the lamp on the hill. With the light that he lit in me. That I don't dishonor him. That I don't let him down. Hallowed be your name in that prayer. Hallowed be your name means I will not dishonor you. Means I will hallow you, revere you, and not dishonor you. And what is in heaven is love and grace and power and presence. And what you thought you had on the other side will be taken away. I thought I was saved. I thought my name would be there. Well, did you listen to the word? Because what he said was, who are my mother and my brothers? Those who hear my word and do it. Not those who say they do it. Not those who want to do it. Not those who used to do it. Not those who did it for a minute. That's the sower of the seed. That's the parable of the sower. It's all tied in. But the one who does what I tell him to do. Crazy stuff, huh? So we get to do a lot of stuff. We get to be something, but it's not easy. The world's around us. The darkness surrounds us. The criticism is there. I just told you of a cop show where they, they're just embarrassed by the name of Jesus. They think it's offensive. They're afraid to use his name. They don't want to pray from his pulpit. They don't want anyone that believes in him to be any good. Everyone that believes in Jesus is a weirdo. They're violent. They're quoting the Old Testament, eye for an eye. <clears throat> they make other people t lay down their life so they don't have to lay down theirs. Every one of them. Everyone that preaches Jesus in these things is just a misfit. Because they don't want that message. They are bought into the world system. And if we are looking for you know money, fame, fun, and comfort, and a whole bunch of other things, then we are, we are agree in agreement with the world system. And even what we think we have will be taken away. Isn't it funny? He says, even what they thought they had 
is going to be taken away. And no secret will remain secret. Anybody here a little worried by no secret will remain a secret? You got any secrets that you don't, kind of don't want anyone to know? In my ministry, there's a lot of people that can't get it. They just can't get it, man. They just constantly relapse. And I tell them from the day I meet them, you have a secret you won't tell. And you've got to tell it, and you've got to get healed of it. You've got to let the Holy Spirit into that secret. You can't hold it. And he says right here, no secret's going to be kept anyway. Everyone's going to know. It's going to be exposed. Anybody, uh, anybody afraid to let a secret go? Think about it. You don't, don't raise your hand. Anybody here thinking, man, oh, I may not want that known. Right? You can go ahead, honey. Play it. Play it like you own it. All right. I love Jesus, and I don't know what happened to this sermon because it's nothing like the other sermon. So if you were at both, you got two different ones. I don't know. But I love Jesus, and I let him speak through me, and I got to tell you, nobody, this is not a scripture to get you to be a lamp on a hill. This is one for you to understand that you have to be a light on a hill. I met Jesus back in 75 and fell in love and went crazy. I was a light on a hill everywhere I went. I've never gone back because I love him. I'm not embarrassed by him. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ or his name. If they would let me on a cop show, I'd pray proud and clear about laying your life down for Jesus Christ. Give your life away. Right here he says, listen carefully. Be careful how you listen. And I got to tell you, listen to Jesus. If you come here to this church, I'm going to read these words of Jesus for the rest of my life. That's all I'm going to read in church is this rest of my life. The word of God become flesh and dwelt among us. What he said while he was here, I'm going to read it to you. And if you'll let it soak in and you'll believe in me being able to tell you what he's saying, your life's going to change. Your marriage is going to improve. Your children are going to be raised better. Your, your everything, your finances are going to go better. Everything is going to go better if you'll take the words of Jesus and eat them, drink them, breathe them, sleep in them. You'll quote them all day long. They will change your life. You'll trust. Here's the biggest thing. Trust in them and depend upon them. Like picture this, a little child. See what I am both on the stage right now? I'm a little child sitting in my father's arms saying, man, I'm scared to death to be in front of hundreds of people. I don't know how to talk. I don't know how to do anything. But at the same time, I'm also a grown man full of the grace of Jesus Christ, full of faith and power, full of his presence. And I stand before you week after week telling you and all week long telling people, if why don't we just trust in Jesus? You can count on him. I promise you can count on him. My life's an example to you. You can count on him. You can count on him. You can depend on Jesus, I promise. We can depend on him like little children depend on their daddy. And we can step out as his servants and be his, his brothers, his mothers, his fathers, his sisters, his sons and his daughters. To him who believe, he gave them the power to become sons and daughters to God. My goodness, what an offer. Say what? How do I sign up to believe? You give your life to Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, give your life to Jesus Christ. Give your life to Jesus. Don't invite him to fix yours. Give him the broken crap. Give him the messed up goo. Just let him have it. See what he does with it. I mean, you've done terrible with it. Why don't you just give it to him and see what he does with it? I was, I was terrible with it. I've spent the last 46 years trying with all my heart to be a usable vessel, a bright light shining his, reflecting his light on the world. Um, sometimes I've done it really good and other times I've done it really crappy and he's never given up on me and he won't give up on you. Come and walk with him. Give your life to Jesus, amen?
Is that all you have to say, Lord? I don't want to cut you off because of a clock. Oh, Lord. I have a word from the Lord. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Jesus says to you, I know it sounds like my voice because he's speaking through me, but the Jesus says to you, I love you. No, you're not getting it. I love you. I love you just the way you are, but I love you too much to leave you that way. I will, I will help you perfect and grow and change and mold. But remember this, I love love you my eyes are upon you my mind is upon you my ear is inclined to you I know the steps of your life I know the order of your days and I care about them I love you come unto me all of you who are burdened and find rest for your soul If you need forgiveness, I will forgive you. If you need mercy, you will find mercy in me. But you must come decisively and you must give your life to me and let go of your old life. There is no other way. For I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father lest he come through me. Don't you know if you've seen me, you've seen the Father? For I and the Father are one. And I go to prepare a place for you in the bosom of our Father. And he longs for you and he waits for you. If you would only come and only give your life to me. You will find mercy and you will find grace and you will find love. And you will find rest for your weary soul in me. Come. Come and let your soul be healed. Come. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks for watching the Father's House Orville YouTube channel, but don't stop there. We'd love you to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a live service or a video. Help us spread the message of Jesus by sharing this video with your friends. You can also support the Father's House financially by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for watching today, and we hope to see you again soon.